All right, this is MMA Bros, number one, expert analysis of mixed martial arts. I'm Evan, and here's my brother, Kurt. Yes, my name is Kurt. And I'm we are self-proclaimed MMA experts. We are. We know what we're talking about. <laughs> so we want to talk, today we want to talk about some judging issues. Uh, it's been a hot topic in MMA, a lot of controversial judging calls, the most recent with George St. Pierre and Johnny Hendricks. I, I think w something that everyone can agree about in MMA in the UFC is that the, the judges suck. <laughs> uh, I don't know if it's mostly the judges' fault or if it's the scoring um, or the way the scoring, <coughs> the 10-point must system, but uh, it is really almost unpredictable when a fight is over. Three round, a three-round fight especially. When a three-round fight is over, it doesn't matter how much you thrash the other guy, you might lose. Yeah, well, let's just talk about the... Let's talk about GSP, Johnny Hendricks, as an example of, of judging, since that's the most re recent. How did you score that fight? What were your thoughts at the end of it? Well, I, I, I thought it was clearly... It was clear that Johnny Hendricks had won. Um, I mean... I'm trying to think of a time when Pierre was really dominant. Um, I mean, he there there were times when he was <clears throat> when he was hitting him. He landed a head kick in the first round. Maybe maybe the head kick, but still, Hendricks came came back. Um, but you, you you say that, but that's not how uh, that's not how fights are judged right now. Fights aren't judged by who's the most dominant throughout the fight. They're judged by who won each round. Which was the, what was the round that was the one that people were thinking? Uh, it, the uh, all all of the rounds. Uh, I think everybody has had George St. Pierre winning rounds three and five. Everyone had Johnny Hendricks winning two and four, and one was the uh, one that there was a, a little bit of disagreement on. Although I think. Although a Hendricks took GSP down, had him against the fence, and was really, really um, hitting him hard with those elbows. Yeah, but in, it, 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 then people would say, well, GSP took him down in the beginning of the round. Like, he did land some good punches, landed, landed a head kick, even though it didn't seem to do much. You know, the, the other thing that can be made is I've heard people say, well, who you just look at someone's look at their faces? GSP looked beat up, and Johnny Hendricks didn't. But I've also that's kind of a facetious argument because I've seen fights where one guy obviously won, but he looked the worst for wear after the fight. That can change from person to person. Some people mark up a lot easier than others, so you can't really judge a fight by how someone looks. That's true. Case in point, Fedor. He, I mean, he would step yeah. with a lot of fights looking like he had been mauled. He had really, he had skin that would break pretty easily, but um, you know, he'd win those fights decisively. So yeah, uh, aesthetics, you can't be, be judging a... You a, can't just say, oh, that guy looks better, so he won. <laughs> they could factor in the medical suspensions. Though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, so the, the problems, the problem, main problem I would, I, I see with a 10 point 10-9 system, 10-point must system is when it comes to MMA, there's no clear to route, there's no clear route to getting a 10-8 round. In boxing, it's 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 clear. You drop somebody, you win a round, you get a 10-9. You drop somebody in the round, you get a 10-8. Mm -hmm. But in MMA, you drop somebody, you can drop somebody two times in an MMA round, you're still getting a 10-9 round. The same as if you had both danced around, jabbed him one more time in the face, and then you get the same 10-9 round. Oh, and no one gives a 10-10. And they... you never see 10-10s, and then unless a guy's almost killed and survives, you never see a 10-8. Yeah, so why don't – okay, my, my question is why does no one give a 10-10, and why aren't there clear at least some sort of idea of what a 10-8 round would look like? So I think if, we're, if you're going to stick with that system – People call for this half point system. Well, that's why do we need a half point? We are. That, why do we need twenty points? We already have ten points. 
We just need to use know how to use the ten points correctly. Uh, anyone who thinks a half point system will help something needs needs to understand a little bit more about math. They have a hard enough time adding up adding up the cards already. They don't need ha they don't need fra you don't need to throw fractions and decimal places in there. Actually, that's a great point. <laughs> I actually wonder what the average educational le uh, level and IQ of the judges. You know, well, you know they don't get paid very much, so. I, I I I I was interested in it, so I kind of looked looked a little bit online, and they, they you get I mean you you've basically sacrificed your weekends, and then you get paid paid a couple bucks per per night. Those peoples, then we can just rest assured that they know what they're doing. They're smart men. <laughs> yeah. So so what kind of suggestion would you have? How what type of criteria would you Put forward for uh, a 10-8 round. You, so I think we both agree. If you're going to stick with a 10-point must system, a 10-9 is if you edge the round. What kind of criteria can you put in place to make a 10-8 a little more uh, make judges more comfortable with giving 10-8 rounds, or put put forth a criteria that would qualify someone for winning a round 10-8? You know what? One thing that does happen in MMA a lot is you will have some rounds where there is basically no offense coming from one side. Maybe maybe in a, a round where there's no offense, um, that could be a 10-8. Maybe also uh, in a round where uh, someone gets staggered, or there's obviously someone's obviously suffering from a from getting hit, that might be a 10-8. Mm -hmm. Or, um, I, and I'd like to put something in there related to submissions because I think those are constantly underrepresented. Um, on the score sheets, but I'm not exactly sure how you would do that. Like how, but first of all, they don't know anything about submissions anyway. Cecil Peoples or kicks. Cecil Peoples saying that kicks don't win fights. Um, but um, <laughs> the Shogun uh, Machida fight. Yeah. He's judging. So yeah, I don't know how you would do that. Like ha, an almost Kimura or an almost triangle. I don't. I don't know. That's harder to. To really nail down. That's where it gets more complicated because it's easy to say, well, a guy gets knocked down, you give him a 10-8. But in MMA, you have all the different aspects, all the different martial arts. So you can't favor, you can't just say if someone gets dropped, they get a 10-8 because that that puts the jiu-jitsu guy, the wrestler, at a disadvantage. They have to have something they can do to 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 get a 10-8 as well. So. It has to be something general enough that it can apply to everybody, and that's hard in a system that. Right. So, for me, that kind of that kind of makes the whole system. You almost have to. It, just... it, 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 that makes it that re when you really start talking about how you can fix the ten point must system, to me, it becomes so subjective that I think you really. For me, I don't. I don't really think that's a sustainable way. The only way, the only way I can see a, a a ten ten point must system working is if you implement some type of open scoring, uh, because then at least a fighter knows where they stand on the judges' cards, and and so if they are behind, at least they can feel what the judges are going for, and then make the adjustment during the fight so they don't they don't just get duped at the end. At least it gives them a fighting chance to. Uh, to, to get up on the judges' scorecards if, if they can and see that, what the judges are looking at. And that eliminates those retarded third rounds where both people think they're winning and just dance around each other. Right. I, I've heard people argue, well, because in boxing, the reason, the, one of the arguments I've heard against open scoring is, well, if some guy knows he's, he's ahead, then uh, he'll just coast through the last rounds not to lose and it'll make for boring fights. The thing is, fighters do that anyway. And in MMA, you you don't have 12 rounds; you only have three rounds or five rounds in a title fight. So I think that's much less of an issue, and we already have it anyway. So I actually think it would if, if fighters knew if fighters knew the score going to the third round, and it was close. I think you'd see a lot more action. I think it would actually maybe have the opposite effect. Uh, does K1 have open scoring? Uh, K well, K1's no more, but. Uh, I think they, they did it. They did implement open scoring. Um, you know, and the thing is, what sport 
in base, I mean, every other sport has open scoring. It's not a secret. It's like in basketball, it's like, oh, we, we keep the amount of you, you know you can't keep track of how many baskets everybody scores. And they don't, they don't just keep 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 it a secret. Everyone's just playing as hard as they can, and then at the end they're like, "Here's the score, you know, 83 to 82." No, you, you see the scoreboard. You see you see uh, how many points each team has, and every point plays with their score in mind, and the strategy changes depending on their score. Why should it be any different in MMA? Shouldn't. But 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 um, two other two other thoughts about this. One is if we stick if we stick with the ten point must, we have somehow the judges have to get in, into their heads that they can do a ten ten. I think that would be a lot easier than scoring a ten eight. There's a lot more rounds in MMA where you can say it could go either way, and you could easily score that a ten ten. And I think that would at least allow some more variation in the scoring. And my other thought is is even more basic: the judges need to be trained. And they need to be people who preferably have grappling, wrestling, and, and kickboxing experience. Mm. What, or else it becomes subjective, like you know, in, at the um, uh, gymnastics or, or something like you know, in the Olympics where the girls are like swirling those ribbons around and dancing. <laughs> I mean, well, if, how do you get how do you get how do you get well trained judges when you don't pay them anything? Talent goes where the money is. Well, I mean, okay, so that's true. Talent goes where the money is. Is there no way that Dana, Dana White and the money running out of his ears can, uh, can change that? Well, that kind of leads to another question. Um, a, lot of, a lot of sports, like the NBA, NFL, they have their own referees. Yeah, but not fighting. Not in fighting sports, but they do have their own referees. When the U when the UFC goes overseas, I, I they think... test the fighters on their own. They they uh, they choose who goes over there and refs the fights. To my understanding, so in the UFC's overseas shows, they're doing that already. Why not just do that? I would suppose that that would open you up to a lot of litigation, um, especially in a sport that is so dangerous. Um, think about the NFL, for example. They're, they're, they. Have, I mean, this might happen with the UFC someday. And actually, I'd like to do a show on this, on uh, brain injury, um, due to, due to strikes. But the NFL is getting, getting uh, sued a lot, and they're having to implement. They're really having to change the game. I think eventually they're going to have to change the, change significant things about the game in order to not be sued because of, what we're finding out about, you know. Brain injury due to due to being hit. So I, I would think that choosing first of all, uh, you I, I think it's smart to have a third party ref because um, uh, you want them to be. I don't think you want them to be involved uh, in the organization itself because I think then people would be guessing double. Doing, you know, doubting their um, objectivity, and and also I think it would it would, especially the refereeing would open you up to litigation. I mean, as it is, these guys are getting pounded more than they need to be, and they're going to come back with, with all kinds of injuries eventually. And I can't help but think that that would put a giant red, and white target, on the UFC itself. Yeah. The other, the other issue you, may, you you would have, although it is, you do have it in other sports. There's been scandals in the NBA and in soccer with refs being bribed. But with the fighting sport, with with the way with the way that the UFC is set up, you know, in NBA you have different owners of different teams. The UFC is one league where all the fighters are paid by one entity, and they're making money from pay per view from TV. Yeah. It's also centralized, and it's such a centralized system where someone like GSP is such a huge, huge money maker. Um, it, it would open. I think it would also open up a lot of questions of, of fight fixing that type of thing, which would totally destroy the sport. 
especially a young sport like MMA. And so I think that, that alone probably, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm actually surprised that in their over, the way they run their overseas fights, there's not more questions of that. But uh, Everyone's already thinking of pro wrestling. Right. So I think, I think, with 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 the pat with the corruption in boxing, with you know, with the similarities people see with the WWE, I think the UFC and, and and MMA in general needs to make sure to draw a clear distinction between themselves and idea being confused with that. You know, we live federalism means that we live in a country that that has many different states which govern a lot of their own business and. And um, these judges are picked by the state athletic commission. Is that isn't that true? Yes. So if I were Dana, I would stop bad mouthing the refs, and what I would do is I would cozy up or bribe or whatever I need to do one of the state commissioners to change, well, pay these guys more, and change um, the rules related to who can be a judge. And then I would just prefer him with all of my, with all of my big name shows. Yeah. And, and then the other states would have would have to get a clue and be like, if I want to draw this business into my state, I'm not only going to have to sanction UFC, but I'm going to have to provide good judges and referees. Yeah, I mean UFC is a big money maker. That's their whole argument. To that was their argument when they. Became legalized in different states. They can, they, I think, they can definitely pull their weight around more, pull their leverage more. If 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 a state is doing a good job, show, have more shows there until the other states ship up. I mean, you know, fix fix the fix the problem. For Dana White to blame the judges, you know, I I, I think he likes to be able to do that. Well, I just I just think he, he likes, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, so what do, what do you think about uh, what do you think about a, a lot of people have have thrown the suggestion, well, why don't we just go back to pride scoring? Pride scoring the the fight was judged as a whole. You know, I don't know if I mentioned this, but with with 10, 10 point must scoring, you can have a guy that you know, the way it is now, you can have a guy that barely edges around. And it scored the same as someone just getting blasted in a round. Yeah. So, what do what do you think about the whole pride scoring, judging judging the fight as a whole when it's all said and done? I don't know. I I think that would put the bias to whoever's going to be doing the most toward the end of the fight. Well, who wins the fight? Is it who wins in the beginning or who wins in the end? You know, normally, on, on, I mean, if we're if we're t taking just a, a regular fight, for example, on the street. Whoever's dominating at the end is the guy that wins. But then again, that's you know that kind of goes back to the old days when there weren't time time limits, right? Yeah. That type, of mindset, that type of mindset. If you have a time limit, though, I don't think you can really judge something that way. Well, this brings up the whole question of maybe actually standardizing the scoring system. Like right. this, this also exists for sports like judo. Jiu-Jitsu. I really think there's going to have to be a fundamental change in the way MMA is done in the future. I think two things are going to really push this change. One is the increased medical evidence, and I know I keep saying this because I want to talk about it, um, related to pugilistic dementia. <laughs> <laughs> people, in other words, or, or other brain um, problems that people are getting from getting hit so much. So they're going to have to change something related to MMA to, to make it safer in that regard. And then also, if they want international acceptance, they want to be part of the um, uh, the Olympics, then they're going to have to have a more standardized scoring system like we see in other um, in other sports, like judo and jiu-jitsu, that are on that sort of stage. Um, and so I think it would be good to, to sit down and really think about w how to score things. What what would what does a head kick score related to a punch related to a takedown or a, th a certain throw? And uh, you know I don't know enough about that to really say, but I, I think this needs to be thought about more more specifically. 
Yeah, the, the, then it, I mean, the, what makes that so? I've heard that suggested, but what makes it so complicated, you know, compared to other sports, is just the complexity in MMA. The all the it, it's like it's it's everything combined. I mean, it's one thing to score judo, but then you you throw all these things together, and, and it becomes such a mixed pile of of scores. You know, um, what you give it, you give one point for a takedown. You give you know, half a point for a kick. If it's a harder kick, you get a full point. I mean, but you, you also, just have this jumble. You can just see the judges juggling these bags of numbers, and who knows what they'll come out with. We already see it, though. Like, it, it kind of works. Like, fight metrics, right? We Wait, see- no, I, I disagree with that. In fight metrics, you, you, you'll uh, you'll watch a fight, and, and you'll be like, oh, this guy obviously won. And then fight met- the stats on fight metrics, you're like, what? They don't always match up. Sometimes they support who you think won. Other times they don't. Well, um, uh, is that your the fight metrics that's wrong or your perception? And we'd have to do some studies on that. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it's, uh, there's, there, I mean, no matter what you do, you can't get away from the subjectivity. What 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 constitutes you know where where is the line between a significant strike and a and a regular strike? Uh, you know, that's gonna. That's probably gonna be a little bit different in, in everyone's mind. People are gonna have different perceptions of what cost, what changes it from a normal strike to sub, to something more significant. We almost have a hundred percent subjectivity now, so we're just talking about adding some measure of objectivity to this. I mean, it is almost completely subjective. It's like ice skating or something. Like we we need at least some objective objectivity if MMA wants to really make it big um, on the world scene and become universally accepted, it's going to have to have some sort of point system that's more objective than simply you know, what, three? Or how many judges are there? Three, right? Yeah, three judges. Three underpaid, underqualified, and unintelligent judges. Well, talking about, talking about the number of judges, I have Heard uh, another suggestion, which is add more judges. So you have. So you dilute the stupidity. Dilute the stupidity. So maybe you add five judges per fight. It hopes that instead of two two idiots ruining a fight, you need three. <laughs> I'm a libertarian, so I don't have enough faith in the government to think that even if they had five, that they would pick two people that were actually smarter than the three they already picked. So you, you, yeah. If they can't find three people who are qualified. What makes us think they'll find five people who are? I think you just get five. You get two other stupid people. <laughs> I don't think it. Would be. <laughs> well, why not just pull the crowd? Oh, that's that. Yeah. <laughs> At that point, you just keep adding judges. You might as well just pull the crowd. Yeah. Text fight. D- determine the winner by text poll. Oh, great. Yeah. Well, what exciting fights are coming up? And will there be scoring issues? Well, next one is this Friday. We got uh, Bigfoot Silva against Mark Hunt. Hmm. In Australia. It's on Friday night. Mark Hunt. Polynesian. Super Super Samoan. Yeah, he got he just got knocked out, right? Lost to Junior Dos Santos. That, was that his last fight? Via head kick. I think it was his last fight. So he's coming off that loss. And he's fighting he's fighting who again? Bigfoot Silva. He's lost to uh, Dos Santos. I mean lost to Kane Velasquez for the title. You know, it's hard for me to pick who would win that. Yeah, Mark um... It's going to certainly have a speed advantage. Hunt will definitely... You know, uh, you, you kind of think... That, well, Hunt, Hunt obviously always has that... Always has that chance. But... I don't know. In my mind, I see Silva on top of him grinding and pounding. And uh, pounding him out, so... You know, obviously, I 
I, I don't put Silva as the huge favorite, but I, I see him. Uh, I see him taking it down and pounding, uh, pounding Hunt out. It's kind of how I see the fight going. Unfortunately, I'd, I'd, I'd like to see Hunt win, but it's kind of how I see the fight. I'll watch it. I think Hunt could win. I think Hunt's takedown defense has become a lot better. And, um, but you're probably right. But I, I could see Hunt getting a punch in there and making it a, a short night. Big, but... and the comment event is uh, Shogun. Shogun coming off his lost choke, <laughs> choke yeah, loss to Jill Sonnen against James Tahuna. Nothing in life that's more humili humiliating than losing to that guy with a choke. Losing to Chael Sonnen via submission. You should maybe just retire. Yeah. I think Shogun probably should retire. If he loses his fight, he definitely should retire. He's not he's he's not not old, but he's uh he's been beat up. Yeah. Anyways, anything else to add? Not on this show. We'll have to figure Alrighty, out. well, uh, hope you hope you all enjoyed it, and we'll see you soon. All right, hope you all were enlightened by our competence and our knowledge okay. of MMA. Adios. The MMA. <laughs>